right, well, I'm double mic'd up. I don't know what that means, but uh, could be a problem. Um, of course, I'm also a college professor, and so, uh, you know, <laughs> put two microphones in front of that's That's like the pastor who stood up in front of his congregation and took off his watch and laid it down on the pulpit, and, you know, he said, uh, you know what that means? And they, somebody in the congregation said, what? He said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, I was asked to come in here and kind of give you a little bit of a review of what's happened in uh, my total of 18 years with the city. Um, uh, the last six, of course, being as mayor. And uh, you know, so there, there's a lot of things that have happened, but there's a lot of things that are yet to happen. And you're starting to see some of those things taking shape now. Um, College Station's a vibrant place. I mean, you're here because it is. I mean, think of what this area would be like if we didn't have Texas A&M. And as much as we go, oh, the students are back. Uh, you know, at the same time, um, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the students. Um, that was part of my delay getting here. And as folks who know me and know what I do at the university, I tell uh, folks who've never met me before, if they have children or grandchildren going to A&M, you hope they don't know my name, all right? Because that means that I have, I deal with all the students who have been dismissed or suspended. Oh, yeah. And you think every one of those parents that walks in my door knows that their son or daughter got a D or a multiple Fs? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'm just glad I'm not in the car riding home with them. Uh, <laughs> so. In any case, let's take a look at what's been going on here. Um, this is a vibrant place. The water tower that you see out there that says uh, Heart of Aggie Land, uh, I love that slogan because that's really who we are. Um, 3.1 million gallons of water. And you might think, oh, well, that's, that'll cover us, won't it? No, not quite. We've got two other water towers. All right. And uh, between those, those three water towers, uh, when it's a busy day, when it's hot, like it's been this year. By the way, didn't you like having to put on a jacket this morning? Um, yeah, I thought that wasn't going to happen again in my lifetime. Um, but still, uh, the idea being that, hey, we've got to be ready. And this water tower, once it's in service, will service the areas of some of our neighborhoods, particularly east of Highway 6, and uh, especially those that are growing farther to the south. Costco, for example, will get its water from this water tower once it's turned on. All right, so it's an important water tower for us to have to balance things out. Um, heaven knows that probably within the next 20 years we'll need a fourth water tower. And that will most likely be on the west side of town, west of the tracks. All right? Or as friends of mine who know me know that um, uh, I now live over in Mission Ranch, which we'll talk about in a little bit later on, west of the tracks, so I now live on the wrong side of the tracks, and I'm reminded that every time I hear the train coming and I'm coming down Rock Prairie West and I see longer and longer trains, and that's, that's a whole nother part of our future. All right, well, Highway 6, it's gonna get a met, be a mess, folks. And it's going to be a mess for a number of years, but that's not going to happen for quite a while. Um, but what you are now using as the frontage road will actually end up going underneath those overpasses. And can you imagine, you'll be able to go on the frontage road from Fitch all the way up to 21 and perhaps beyond and never hit a traffic light, all right? Yeah, yeah. So you won't have to get onto Highway 6 itself. You'll be on the frontage roads. And there's reasons for that. Because part of our future is we're going to see more and more semi-trucks coming through Bryan College Station. Um, things that are happening outside of our city are directly going to impact us. Freeport. All right, you all know Freeport's down there, Surfside, that area down that way. Um, Right, Freeport is being dredged, and it will become the produce port of the Gulf Coast. All right. Now, when they were starting to plan this, they said, well, BNSF, the railroad, um, 
you'll just extend your lines down there to, and be in it. And they said, no, we're not going to do it. And they said, okay, so how are we going to do that? All right, well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to build more highways, and we're going to have to widen. In 36, all right, if you go down to Hempstead and you take that little quick right turn and maybe you're headed down to Wharton or someplace like that, all right, uh, 36 is then from Hempstead forward is going to have 36A, and that's going to connect right to Highway 6. Highway 6 then will get all that truck traffic that's going up to Dallas, Fort Worth, and beyond. Um, and so it's in our best interest to embrace this discomfort that we're going to have to feel um, with the widening of these roads. And of course, the College City, those of you who are close can see it, our welcome sign is right there. Well, we're going to have to move that now um, because that's part of where the frontage road is going to go and it's going to go underneath that. And this is a University Drive right there, if, for those of you who can see it. So that's going to be a change for us, right? But the idea is our local, our local vehicular traffic is not going to have to be on Highway 6, all right? It will be able to stay on the frontage roads, and you won't have to compete with those semis coming down 70 miles an hour. If that's, in fact, what they're doing, I think they don't realize it's 70. They think it's 75 or more, all right? Um, this is a, an intersection that's, whew, you know, TxDOT grades intersections. Just like letter grades in school, you get A's through F's, right? This is the Holloman and 2018 intersection. Right? The best it ever gets is a grade is a D. Right? And if you live on this side of 2818, you know that over here we have the cottages and a bunch of other student housing areas. There's more. There's one that's just got cleared and it's about to be built a little farther down Holloman. Um, but the city also has something that it's going to be working on. You can't quite see it up here, but Jones Butler, right? When 2818 was made as it is today, Jones Butler was cut off. And it used to be that you could go all the way up to F and N, right? but you can't do that right now. So the city worked with the state and we said, wait a minute, let's get some of this traffic off of here. And yeah, we know state, you're gonna be doing all of this change, but let's also open up Jones Butler because Jones Butler then empties right into Penberthy. And for those of you who maybe don't recognize the name, all right, that is the road that goes between the tennis courts and where the softball fields and the track is now, and uh, Reed Arena, all right? And so that will give those students a straight shot instead of having to come up here and sit at that traffic light. And if any of you have ever tried, and I emphasize try, to get someplace on time by co coming up 2818 around, oh, let's say 5 o'clock, 510, 530, no, pack your dinner because you're going to be sitting there for a while, all right? Um, but that's one of the changes that's going to happen. So 2818 is going to see some significant changes over time. Um, we've already done some work on 2818 as it comes by the library here. You saw that work being done during the summer. That was smart. Not a lot of people there, but this is one of those things. It's such a long-term project that you just can't avoid time when everybody is here. Oh, gosh, Union Pacific, where should I start? This is the Rock Prairie intersection, right? Um, one of the things I will love about getting this, inter this railroad crossing corrected is that some of you who have, maybe you have a, there's a veterinary, veterinarian's office right over here, all right, Welburn Road and Vet, all right, that's where I take my pets. And uh, I, when I was living over in Emerald Forest, I sat at that light for well over half an hour, watching the arms come down, but there were no trains. All right? The arms just came down whenever they wanted to. All right? And so Union Pacific is about to come in. And the thing, the key about this is there's only one set of tracks there. Union Pacific, as it gets ready to rebuild this crossing, is going to have two sets of tracks. All right? So trains will be coming, 
and trains will be going, sometime at the, sometimes at the same time, many times not at the same time. And for those folks who think they're smarter than the average bear, who think, well, there, the train just went by, I'm gonna go around that arm that's still down. They're gonna be in for a rude awakening. And every once in a while you, you hear about a crash of that nature. But this is happening here. It's already been done, set up down at Greens Prairie when that intersection was re redone. It's happening at Deacon. And if you go today, if you wanna take a little drive just to verify this, go up Welburn Road, and, uh, or that, Welburn Road's that way. Go up Welburn Road, all right, and you'll see they've got sections of track sitting down there away from the actual crossing because they are going to be double tracking there. Further verification, go over the railroad crossing right by the bell tower in front of Heap and Clayburg uh, on campus, and you'll see that they've already got the concrete was poured so that they can just come in and lay down another set of tracks. So double tracking, more trains, all right, because there's gonna be more work going on. The Port of Houston, remember what I said before about different places outside of College Station impacting what happens inside College Station. The Port of Houston is also being enlarged. All right? They wanna to get to the point where they can turn a ship around in the channel, not just have to go up and back and have tugboats slowly pull the ships back and forth. All right, they're gonna be doing more of that. And so we're gonna see more trains. The other thing is Union Pacific has also changed how it operates its trains. Several years ago, they decided they were gonna have very, very long trains. And if any of you go to Olson Field like me, all right, um, you, you know the ritual that we have or the tradition that we have at College Station. We hear the horn of the train and uh, we, hold up how many locomotives we think it's gonna be, all right? And uh, yeah, I know it's silly. I, I tried to explain that to somebody who was visiting. They said, what the heck? Uh, please, you know, there's a few things we have to do. Um, so anyway, right now, typically you see two or three locomotives. More often though now, we've seen a locomotive in the middle, right? We've also seen locomotives at the very end, right? pushers, as they call them, in Union Pacific parlance. Well, Union Pacific found out that they were having problems assembling these long trains. It takes much longer to put them together. And so they said, well, we're gonna keep these long trains, but when we've got things like food or livestock feed that needs to come faster, we're going to go and have shorter trains so we can get those kinds of things, perishables, to their destination much quicker. So we're going to see long trains, right? And we're also going to see some shorter trains come through. Uh, good example of this, Sanderson Farms, all right? Has about four million chickens, all right? That are roosting, breeding, whatever you want to call it. Um, at various places. They were running out of feed because Union Pacific was having problems making deliveries. So they turned to the federal government and the federal government said, okay, you're gonna have to park all your other trains off to the side and get the feed to these chickens because now it becomes a issue of food insecurity, uh, not just for small areas, but for large areas. And so Union Pacific was forced to go to the smaller trains. So we're gonna see this happen over and over again, but don't be surprised. Um, just the other day, I counted five locomotives um, on the front end. And, it's, and you're gonna see that our trains, our railroads are working together more often than not. You'll even see Canadian Pacific trains, all right? Because there's a whole new merger going on there with Kansas City Southern. Don't get me talking about trains. Linda was teasing me, is this gonna be all about trains? Because uh, eh, it's a passion. Also, uh, my youngest stepson uh, is the yard master for one of the Union Pacific rail yards. So anyway, all right, Costco, all right. Costco represents more than just Costco being here. All right. During the pandemic, um, a number of companies that before had looked at College Station and they got their data from the government and the, the data came out and it said, Oh my gosh, 
you know what, College Station's a nice town, but the per capita income just isn't there. Per capita income, are you kidding me? All right, um, on our council, we joke about have the, the effect, the economic effect of parents' plastic. All right, yeah, you think that doesn't have an economic impact on our community? All right, well, Costco said, wait a minute, College Station's economy didn't take that precipitous dip that a lot of other places did. Why not? Well, we can thank the big dog in, in the community, Texas A&M, because classes kept going, people kept staying in town, even the kids who, you know, mom and dad were like, hey, we're empty nesters now. <laughs> Do you think we really want you back home? Uh, <laughs> you know, um, you know, your father's running around. No, don't even talk about that. Um, but in any case, uh, they decided that they would take a closer look, and they did. And then as they were looking at us, they saw, wait a minute, our economy went down, but then it started to go up tremendously. All right, our sales tax revenue right now is higher than it was before the pandemic hit, significantly higher. All right, and that's huge for us. That's huge for you as property owners and taxpayers because that goes towards the general fund, a good portion of it. All right. So Costco comes in, does great. Other companies go, okay, what did they know that we didn't know? And why didn't we know it? And so now we've got companies that are knocking on our door saying, uh, College Station, where can you put us? Well, the city council for several years now has had this look toward the future. And all along Highway 6 in particular, we've put in water and sewer lines, all right? electric as well, so that as these companies come and are considering College Station, we can say, by the way, you're not going to have to worry about putting in a water line, a sewer line, or getting electric service because we've already got that taken care of. Oh, so you mean it would be cheaper for us to come to College Station than some other city? Yeah. All right. And why would we come there? You don't have an interstate. Look at Highway 6. All right. And they start to look at the traffic numbers, and they start to look at all the preparation that's already gone in. Costco, for example. All right. When Costco was planning, the city said, we'll cover the cost of the retention pond, so that, and we'll, we'll take care of that. And some people called me up and said, why the heck is the city spending that money on that? Have Costco pay that. Well, you know what? There's all land around Costco that the city owns. And now we can say to those folks that are looking to come in and want to be on that property, you're going to get to use all of your property for your needs because we already have the retention pond taken care of. Oh, you mean we won't have to? No, you're not going to have to build one. It's already there. So that's part of future planning that occurs when we're taking a look at all the things that need to be done. Ah, Century Square. All right. Century Square is about to break ground on some new sections. Um, any of you like La Madeleine's? All right. Um, a La Madeleine's is scheduled to go into Century Square, all right, which would be nice, a little different. Right, but Century Square uh, took over an area that was severely underperforming, owned by the university. And uh, now, instead of those old, remember those old brick married student housing? Yeah, mm, boy. Uh, um, there were some real issues with those, uh, particularly in their latter years. Uh, but now, it's become quite an attraction in itself. And so it's going to, you're going to see that grassy area in the front starting to get filled up with a, a variety of different stores and such. Um, I know J. Crew also uh, contacted the folks, the folks that uh, do, handled the leasing for the property. So that's an exciting piece. H-E-B. Well, remember when we had, um, oh geez, we had uh, Winn-Dixie, we had Albertsons, Randalls, remember? Some people go, they look at that property on University go, well, that was the Albertsons. No, wait a minute. It was built as a Randalls, all right, when it was first built. Some of you are going, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. sure, I remember that. Yeah, Piggly Wiggly is another one, yep. All right, so 
we had all these different types of stores. Well, HEB decided that, hmm, we're, we're going to take care of this. Matter of fact, um, the, the president for expansion, the vice president for expansion, came to this area. This is the Jones Crossing area. Uh, that's at the intersection of 2818 and Harvey Mitchell, um, or Welburn and Harvey Mitchell. And, uh, you know, they were, he was driving around and he saw the barracks. Those of you who are familiar with the barracks, which just keep growing, right? They've just added the whole new apartment complex over there as well. Um, and his question to our director of economic development, he says, where's the nearest supermarket? And she said, well, it's uh, probably Walmart, uh, which is just up the road that way, about a mile, mile and a half. And he said, we don't compete with Walmart. He said, find a space. And so they did. And uh, on the grand opening for this particular HEB, they brought up all their big guns from HEB because this was a, a top-notch HEB. And if you've been in it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but they also knew their market. You know how HEB says, my HEB? All right, think about that. Every HEB in this area is different, all right? This one, you walk in, not, not this entrance. Well, yeah, this entrance. You walk in this entrance, and the first thing you see over here are all the pre-made pre meals that these college students can just throw into a microwave. You know, so can I, uh, <laughs> but uh, for that matter. But then over here, you've got, uh, you can get beer and pizza for 10 bucks, all right? And then a sushi bar, sorry, I don't go there. Um, but uh, anyway, and it's, it's a huge H-E-B. Well, the director of marketing said to my late wife at the time when we're there for the ribbon cutting and Mr. Jones was still alive at the time, he was there as well. Um, she said, oh, we're worried about this store. We're not sure it's going to do real well. And those on city council can remember when they first came to us with plans, we said, you sure you want it that close to the road? You might want to back it up a little bit, a little more parking. They said, no, no, don't need it. Um, well, here it is. First three weeks of operation, this HEB broke all HEB records. All right. All right. So, uh, so much for not knowing College Station. But Mod Pizza, and then there's a number of other uh, small restaurants and other service stores that are all located in the area. It has more land to grow. Um, a hotel was originally planned, apartment complex, more retail, who knows what's going to happen. Um, but that's an area of growth as well for the city. And HEB also has its eye on another location in College Station, almost in Bryan, but also in College Station. All right, Tower Point. Woo. Tower Point is growing. Even this photo is outdated now. All right. Um, Bo Miles and his group came up with the design, those slanted roofs that you see all over Tower Point. All right. And they're just filling up the area, aren't they? All right. It seems like every bit of land that could be built on and some that we probably even wondered, could they build anything on that? They figured out a way to do it. Uh, but Tower Point is huge. It continues to grow. And then, of course, we've got property on the other side of the highway where you've got Lowe's and we mentioned earlier Costco. So this area will continue to grow. This is huge. I remember when I built my first house in Pebble Creek in 97, we used to joke, we say we have to go into town to go shopping, all right? Um, not anymore, all right? Almost anything that you need, you can find down here at Tower Point. Whoa, this is where it gets a little scary. That building is 19 stories high. It's under construction right now, right? It's in Northgate, right? Now, we've already got two very high story buildings in Arise, um, in, I'm sorry, Aspire and Rise, um, the two other student housing dorms that are right there on University Drive. That created a bit of a problem for the city. Before that, our tallest building was about three stories. Right? Now we've got these. Right? Do you think that little water line that was going down through Northgate was sufficient for something like this? Or, hmm, scarier thought, what about between 7 and 8 a.m. when the students are getting up, um, even if they have an 8 o'clock class, they're still pushing it, um, to, and they have to flush. 
right? Uh, sewer lines, water lines, roads, sidewalks, everything had to be redone, including University Drive itself because of the heavier traffic and TxDOT made some changes there. And you're gonna to continue to see changes. One of the challenges that we have, and it's become exacerbated somewhat, if you've been near campus or on campus, um, electric bikes, electric scooters, and I know they say 15 miles, and John's heard this with the transportation committee, 15 miles an hour, but I swear, when I see this guy in a crash helmet and elbow pads and knee pads, and he's going like this, and he's on one of those unicycle things, all right, and it's like, whoa, I don't dare step off the curb, all right, as I'm going from my university office. It's, it's a little scary. But this isn't the last of the high rises, all right? Those of you, of you who know where Boyette and University are located, that convenience store, that property was just sold. The city constantly gets overtures about the parking area behind Northgate, that other folks would like to develop that. The area where Kinko's, FedEx was. Uh, um, those of you who remember Ted Wyatt, where his sporting goods store was, all right? It's now in some, I know some of you said, oh my gosh, Ted Wyatt, yeah. All right, um, but Insomnia Cookies is there now, all right? You see all of that. Uh, that area is ripe for development and student housing is going to be there. The university is at 68,000 students on the College Station campus. Now you're hearing larger numbers because it includes it, Galveston, McAllen, it includes the law school up in Fort Worth, right? 74,000 plus, almost 75,000 actually. Right? But the university is growing at somewhere between one and a half and two percent every year. So do the math and figure out where we're going to be and now how those students are moving about. All right. They're not driving cars as much as they used to. I had a student in my office and I said, so how do you get back and forth? He says, well, mom, mom or dad come and pick me up. I said, you don't drive? He says, no, why should I drive? I don't need a license around here. In College Station, I've got my scooter and I've got Uber. And that's a changing way. I mean, I'm. I don't know about you, but when I turned 17, I couldn't wait to get my driver's license, all right? All right, remember the, well, one you know, and the other one's still there, kind of, all right? Northgate District, all right? Dixie Chicken, all right? Some of you may not have been there recently, but um, Campus Theater, remember that? Geez, I remember um, into the late 80s, I was going to see movies there, all right? And now it's been several different bars over the years and dance halls and that sort of thing. But here's the issue, folks, all right? The Northgate property is some of the most highly valued property in all of College Station, right? As that value goes up, so do the property taxes. And a place like Starbucks or Potbellies or Domino's or, um, you know, what is now Remember the, the deluxe, all right, all right? Love to go there for breakfast especially, all right? And now that's Chimmy's, all right? But as those properties become more and more valuable, it's going to be impossible to gain the kind of rents that you would need to be able to offset those rising property taxes. So Northgate is probably gonna to start to see some more changes. I talked to you just a moment ago about the change with that convenience store at Boyette and University. That goes, watch for something else. Might be a narrow high rise, might be something else. Um, there's all different kinds of businesses that are adapting themselves to college towns. Whole Foods now has what they call the 360 market. All right? That's just for college towns. It's a smaller building. But like the HEB that I talked about that has all these ready-made meals, hey, that's what they've got, all right? You come in there, they know their market. Um, the same thing is gonna be true of a, a lot of these other places that will be creeping up and coming into our marketplace over the years. New neighborhoods. This is where we get challenged. Two legislative sessions ago, the state legislature came up with a law that says cities can no longer um, annex areas 
unless those areas come and request it. All right? Now, that was that and that that was okay, all right? Except what they failed to consider is that what about as those areas develop? And that developer, for example, if he has dense housing, has to put in a wastewater treatment plant that has a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. What are those folks going to do in 15 years? Sorry, if you can't flush, you can't sell. And you can't live there. All right? So one of the things that's going to have to happen is we're going to have to see a greater cooperation and some new ideas and maybe even a bit of a retraction from the legislature about who can annex. The goal by the legislature was laudable. They were concerned about the small towns that were getting gobbled up by the likes of Houston and San Antonio and Dallas and Fort Worth. And that's, that's what they were trying to prevent from continuing to happen. They were responding to the need. But then when they changed it to say, any town with, of a population greater than 100,000, and we're in that realm right now, right, could not annex. That stopped things. And so now, some of you may remember, we had a bridge on the west side of town that was out of service for almost a year and a half right, because that couldn't be taken care of. It couldn't be annexed. Greens Prairie Road. There is a section of Greens Prairie Road that is in the county. And until recently, the county had not agreed. And the city could not annex it. Well, now the county has said, hey, College Station, you're free to annex that. Right? We'll give you the money to repair it, but then we don't want to have anything more to do with it. And we said, fine, because it's important, because we've got folks living on both sides of that county section so that they can get all around and do the things they need to do. But we've got neighborhoods, Southern Point. Southern Point was originally going to have about 1,492 homes. I, I think I've got that number right. It's now, with some of the changes that they've brought about and brought in some additional developers because they cannot build homes fast enough. Right? Uh, they're gonna be just over 2,000 homes, just in that neighborhood. And for those of you who aren't, don't recall where that's located, Remember the old Texas World Speedway, all right? And uh, if you go down Highway 6, you can see that gradually they've been taking down the berm that served as the, as the speedway itself. But Southern Point came to the city smartly and said, you know what? We realize this is going to be a big neighborhood. Uh, and so could we work with the city and connect into your wastewater treatment services. And the city said, yes, and we'll share the cost with you. And we did, um, because they were originally going to put in this big PVC pipe. Well, that's fine, but you don't know where the roads are going to go. And what do you think happens to PVC pipe after a big truck runs over it? Mm. All right. That would have been a problem. So now we've got a big PVC pipe that runs all the way down. All right. And when Southern Point is fully built out, Southern Point, that area, will become part of College Station. All right. Mission Ranch is already in the city, but Mission Ranch also talks about something that you see a lot of in Houston, all right? Um, down in Houston, you have a number of neighborhoods that are where, where if you live there, you pay the developer for your electric water and sewer. You think there isn't a little bit of an uptick there? All right, um, but here, we, Mission Ranch and Caldwell Homes, that the developer of Mission Ranch, first came to the city and said, we want to do that too here in College Station. College Station took the attitude that no, if you're in College Station, we're not going to allow you to do that. And Mission Ranch said, well, then we're not going to build here. Hell, like heck, you're going to build here. And they are. Uh, and uh, doing very well, by the way, over there at Holloman. And uh, fortunately, the school district has a new elementary school right there at its, at its gateway and uh, would be to the left of where you see this. And the homes, again, are going up as quickly as they possibly can. They're bringing in crews from all over uh, and 
just getting the homes up as fast as they can. I live in Mission Ranch now. Um, okay. Fujifilm. We talk about big dogs in this community. Well, Fujifilm is turning out to be a really big dog. All right. Fujifilm does research and manufacturing of vaccines. All right. um, one of the vaccines that was used for COVID is being manufactured here at Fuji. They are on the 25th of October, they are about to break ground on another area of their business. And it's going to be valued in the neighborhood of about $330 million. Yeah, mm-hmm. They will have, by the time they get that built and filled out, right now they've got 700 employees, they'll have about 850 employees, all right? Making good money making the kind of money where folks can move into College Station and they can afford to live. Uh, that's a huge opportunity for Fuji. It's a huge opportunity for College Station. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see what they can do, not just for College Station, but what they're bringing to the world in the way of health care. Um, also, if you happen to take a look, if you're interested, take a look and, and see just what Fuji does as far as its employees are concerned. Uh, my neighbor works for Fuji, and he has weird hours. I mean, he has to be there like at 2 in the morning and that sort of thing, but it's manufacturing, and they've got to keep this thing going. Um, but he is so glad he came. But now he's an example of a number of folks that I see who are moving into College Station, and they're coming from other areas. Uh, and so they expect certain things to be around. They exper expect us to have some hospitality and tourism is one of the things that we're known for here right? um, but you've also heard and I don't have a slide on, on for this one but um, you've probably heard me talk about for 12 years now about having a YMCA in College Station and uh, we had a recent meeting with YMCA leaders in City Hall and we're having another one by the way on November 16th at 7 p.m. Um, and talking about the programs that a YMCA could bring here. Now, we've talked about having a recreation center here in College Station, and that's what a lot of these folks that come to these new companies, Fuji isn't the only one, Matica, Biotech, and Bio is another one. Uh, folks that are coming to the university as the university grows from different areas. And they're looking for things that are attractive, not just to them, the employee, but also to their families. And one of the things we've lacked here in town is a recreation center all right, uh, to serve everybody from birth to just about that time when you're about to say so long to this, this earth that God's put you on. All right? But the idea being that there are ways that we can provide this, and whether it be with a freestanding YMCA or whether it be a recreation center managed by the YMCA, are something that the mayor after me and uh, the council are going to have to make decisions on. Um, and it's, it's something that I think is time long past due for College Station. Uh, we talk about the quality of life here. Uh, we need to be focused on that. Um, many of you probably came back here. Some of you chose not to leave once you came here. All right? But you stayed for a reason, right? And you saw certain things, but you probably also thought of some things too that you wished the city had. And perhaps a recreation center is one of them. Tourism is one of our biggest things, all right? Um, it's huge. We've taken a look recently at some numbers uh, about just how important tourism is. Uh, you know, we got some criticism uh, a little while ago. Uh, we've recently passed uh, to build a, what we're calling the Independence Ballparks. They're gonna be down Rock Prairie Road East, uh, past where the, uh, down there by where, where the uh, original, well, I shouldn't say original, but the most recently closed landfill was located. Go past Baylor Scott and White, uh, go past the nursing home there, all right, and down in that area. Um, and there'll be a total of eight hardball courts when it's fully developed and people say, why would you do that? Why would you spend that kind of money? Because in the long term, that kind of money gives great dividends to the city. Right? When you have a ballpark 
like that, and you bring in 30, 40 teams on a weekend, and the parents, and the coaches, and the vendors, and others who are just interested in the sport. They stay in your hotels, they go to your stores, they stop at the convenience stores, they go to the restaurants, all of that converts to good money. They're in, they're here, and they're out. And then they're gone. And during the course of the week, our little leaguers have the fields, all right? Other groups have the fields. So it's something that we need to consider. Um, you know, kind of reversing my thoughts a little bit on, on the YMCA, one of the things we heard from a large portion of the folks was to have an indoor natatorium, a, sw a large swimming pool with a competitive pool, lap pool, and therapy pool. Why would we do that? Well, right now, if you have a son or daughter who's a swimmer and goes to A&M Consolidated, okay, they can go over to the middle school and that's their pool. But if they go to College Station High School, there is no swim team. And by 2030, the school district is planning on another high school, probably over on the west side, right, um, in order to have a place where they can all go. And so all children of, at each of those three schools uh, will have an opportunity to have the same kind of swimming uh, opportunities, just like A&M Consolidated. But this is uh, over Century Square. Uh, that's proven to be a great location for a number of events we've had. And I think, there we go. We're back to the beginning. All right, um, how am I doing? All right, questions. Mm -hmm.